Hi, welcome to this week's video. My name is Paul. So this week, again doing some dry media landscape drawing. Just very briefly, because every week I know there's some new people to this channel. Uh, very briefly, the materials are, at the moment you can see me using some compressed charcoal. This is produced by a company called Derwent and they call them Derwent XL Charcoal Blocks. It's a bit of a mouthful. It basically, it's just compressed charcoal. I'm drawing onto a gray toned paper. It's a drawing paper by a company called Strathmore. And in a minute or two, you'll see me using some soft pastels just to add in some color. And those soft pastels are produced by a German company called Schmincke. Other things that I use at the moment, you can see me using some tissue paper, just to smudge some of the charcoal dust move it around the paper, um, mainly because it's fun to do that. And sometimes I don't think I use it in this drawing, but sometimes I'll also use a kneaded eraser um, just as another drawing tool. Now, as usual, with a lot of these videos, what I'm going to talk about isn't directly related to what I'm, what you can see me doing on screen, the drawing that I'm doing. The drawing video is merely just something to watch. It might be of some interest to some people. In the mornings, not always, but very often, um, I watch one or two YouTube videos, uh, art videos, just to get the day started. It's a nice way to get into the day. I used to sit and read through the news and stuff, um, but these days I tend to avoid that. And instead, for a more positive start to the day, I, I like to watch YouTube videos by other artists. It's interesting for me to watch artists doing their thing. And we all have different ways of approaching uh, the creative process. And also listening to their ideas about art and things. Sometimes I agree with what they're saying, sometimes I disagree. It's not a bad thing, that disagreement. I know these days sometimes, especially on the internet, disagreement is a terrible thing and anybody disagrees with me is the worst in the world. I don't think that. Um, we all have our different opinions about different things. In terms of art, I say I often label myself as a modern artist, modernist artist. Um, and I have a specific idea of what that label means which again may be different from other people. But anyway, this morning, one of the videos that I watched was young, young man, young artist. Um, and his video was, I can't remember the exact words, but it was something like modern art is bad. Avoid modern art. Um, which was interesting to me because that's the sort of art that I create. So I was wondering why my art is so dangerous and should be avoided by other artists. The, the sort of way that he presented it was, imagine that you're going to fly somewhere and you're at the airport, you're getting on the plane and you meet the pilot and the pilot says, good morning, blah, blah, blah. And then he also, the pilot turns around to you and says, yeah, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea how I make this thing fly. I just sort of switch on things and see what happens. And the question is, would you still get on that airplane with that pilot? And of course, the answer is probably no. Um, you make other arrangements with a different airline. This artist was then saying that you should treat modern art the same way. Modern artists don't have a plan. They just sort of start something and see what happens. And you should avoid their art because it's bad in the same way that you should avoid the, the pilot who doesn't really know what he's doing. It's an interesting idea. Um, it's one way of looking at it. But I would argue that as, as a logical argument, it sort of falls apart pretty quickly. I've never flown a plane. I, I'm not a qualified pilot. But I can imagine the process of flying a plane is quite different to the process of making art. They're really two processes that have little of anything in common. In the same way that 
uh, figure skidding and eating ice cream are two very different processes uh, and really have no connection to each other. Flying a plane, I imagine, is a very technical process. You can't just do whatever you want. Um, things have to be done in certain order. Uh, you have to obey certain rules. There are, for example, in most countries, you'll have restricted air spaces around airports and other military sites and things. And you can't just fly wherever you want. You can't just push buttons in any order that you like. Things have to be done in a certain way. And therefore, the, you know, there are some people who approach art in that way as well, that it's all a very technical process and you have to go through a certain routine in order to create a piece of art. And obviously this young artist, in his mind, that was the right way to make art. I'm not disagreeing with him as such in the sense that that's his way of doing it. And, you know, there's a lot of people that's how they like to make art. The point that I keep trying to make in these YouTube videos is that's not the only way to think about art. To me, art is a creative process. You're taking a bunch of raw materials, as I said, in my case, some paper, some soft pastels, some charcoal. Those are the raw materials. And my creative process then is to turn that into a piece of finished art like you can see on the screen. Some people will like the art, some people won't. It kind of doesn't matter. It's my process of making art. That's how I do it. And as I said before, I don't use any references. It's imagination. And that's my approach to the creative process. But other people, as I say, will have a more technical a more rigorous approach perhaps and in their mind maybe that's a better way to do it and for them it probably is because I think personality has a big part in this different personalities different systems different approaches are going to work better with some personalities than others and this is why I think if you know if you're producing a lot of art that's sort of relies heavily on the technical stuff. It's a very photorealistic, a very naturalistic type of art. Switching over to the type of art that I do is probably going to be a bit of a struggle. In the same way that if I was to try and switch over to doing a more technical sort of art, more traditional approach to art, and a more sort of hyperrealism or photorealism approach to art, that would be quite difficult for me mainly because of my personality, I think. I could probably learn the techniques and all the rest of it, but it would take a bit of time, but I could learn it, but it just wouldn't fit with my personality. I like, I like art to be a spontaneous thing, a creative thing, and I put the emphasis on the creativity rather than on the technical skills. But anyway, as I say, flying a plane and making art, two very different things. Apples and oranges, you can't really compare them. Um, I get the idea that he's trying to put forward. I just disagree with his argument. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching and listening, and hopefully see you again in next week's video.